El mercado de rentas de corto plazo en América Latina llega a 60 mil millones de dólares con una creciente demanda en el estilo de vida marcado por el trabajo remoto. Esto representa que existen cada día más viajeros extranjeros, muchos de ellos nómadas digitales, que buscan este tipo de alojamiento. En función de esta dinámica y lo que el Big Data ha hecho posible en el nuevo rostro de la hospitalidad, cerramos nuestra serie 3 Insights con la reciente fusión de la empresa mexicana Casai y la brasileña Noma. Para ello conversamos con Nico Barwid y Thomas Gus, CEO y presidente respectivamente de la firma que tras la fusión gestionará más de 3,000 departamentos. Welcome both of you. First of all, Claudia, thank you for um, inviting us. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. The, the reason that we decided to uh, start Kasai is because one, this was a, a huge consumer pain point that my co-founder, Mari Carmen, and I felt in the market, that there was basically no in-between between open platforms like Airbnb and traditional hotels. Uh, and, and the other really big reason, which is important, uh, which goes to the core of our DNA, is that Mexico and Brazil are two of the largest tourism economies in the world and conversely that travel and tourism is such an important sector uh, for uh, the overall Latin American economy and so uh, for the last three years we had been building a business really focused on delivering really outstanding guest experiences in Mexico and Brazil and so for the last two years that Kasai had expanded to Brazil um, and specifically in Sao Paulo, we had known about uh, the Noma team and the really outstanding execution uh, that they had done. And we really respected them in the market. We had really admired everything that they had built. And so uh, as Tomas and I started talking about what the future of the industry was, it became clear that we shared joint uh, objectives about really transforming the hospitality sector. And so a few months ago, we really started thinking about how could we build that big future together rather than on different sides of the table. Um, and in many ways, the skill sets that we both have are complementary. As I mentioned, Kasai has really focused on delivering an outstanding guest experience um, in Mexico and Brazil. And, and Tomas uh, and Noma have really focused on building an asset light model um, with their landlords and real estate partners um, in Brazil. And so the fusion of the two companies um, with the core focus on technology made all of the sense in the world. Uh, Thomas, um, what give to to the, your company this merger? Great, Claudia. Thank you for the invite. It's a pleasure to be here with you all. Uh, well, uh, first of all, I think it's important to, to say what is our purpose, what is very similar to, to Kazai as well, that is to really change the hospitality industry with a pro problem that we used to face when we travel. So we've seen that there were only two main options, the Airbnb on, on one side and the hospitality, the hotels on the other. So uh, our dream is to really change uh, this industry in LATAM. Uh, and in a business like that, that is so challenging to scale, to grow your supply, uh, we understood that one of the uh, best shortcuts and way to, to improve uh, and, and really domain this market in, in LATAM was definitely joint forces uh, with one of our main competitors, if I would not say the, the main competitors that, that we have and that we also admire a lot. Uh, and the thing is that Noma has grown in the next in the last five years in a very asset light uh, mode, looking to create the, the most relevant real estate partnerships uh, and strategical uh, partnerships with also institutional investors in Brazil and in LATAM. And in the other side, Kazai has done a great a successful experience on the client side. So when we combine those two different companies, we understood that we really could domain not only the market, but create a better and, and, and ex excellent experience to, to our guests. So uh, the, the way that we see in this merge is basically uh, keep uh, improving and letting our purpose to be closer to us once again. So this is one of the demand the reasons for why we, we did this this much. Okay, um, Nico, there are a plenty of OTIs companies. So, um, it, and this is a, a big market and it is still growing. Uh, how are you going to compete in this in this market? 
The first important thing is that uh, neither Kasai nor Noma is an OTA. The difference between um, any OTA and what Kasai and Noma offers is that we really control the end-to-end -end, uh, experience as opposed to being just an open platform. And so for us, that ability to have the best real estate on our platform deliver outstanding guest experiences with amenities that are highly local, uh, all while doing this through technology really is the main differentiator. And so both Tomas and I are always very focused on uh, the, the experience that we're offering our guests and using technology to make sure that we can do so uh, in, in a way that makes our operations more efficient. The other thing uh, that we haven't mentioned yet is that with the merger between Kasai and Noma, we are by a very large margin now, the largest short-term rental operator in Latin America with 3,000 units uh, under contract. Um, and up until now, both companies have served over 200,000 guests. And so that scale, that experience really allows us to leapfrog um, learnings that subscale uh, operations and players might have to do. Um, and so for us, that scale really allows us to continuing to continue delivering uh, the best for our landlords and, and for our guests. Huh. Thomas, how do you guarantee to, to your user um, the same quality in the in the spaces? Because um, I don't know the the nomad people is used to to follow the standards in the same in the service and even the experience. First of all, and I think that's something that Noma and Kazai has in common. We are very focused on data. So as Nico mentioned, we have received over 200,000 guests and we continuously do uh, uh, different research with those guests and then understand what's really important to each one of them. So when we look to standard and different from the traditional hotel chains, we do not look only for the standards in terms of design and the size of the apartment and things like that, but what is important to those clients. For example, internet uh, definitely is number one priority for a digital nomad. A good bath, a great shower. So we understand which are the items that are very relevant to all of those users and we combine and guarantee this standard in different property levels. So we have units, for example, that are studios that you can spend uh, one, two or three days. And we also have apartments with two and three bedrooms that uh, someone can stay with their family for one or two or three months. So answering your question, we are always improving uh, with our, our data engineers, how we can improve on the experience of the, the clients and also trying to get off the status quo of what the hospitality chain is always seen as a standard and create what this new generation wants uh, based on, on data. So that's how our mindset, mindset works right now. Okay, Thomas, um, and what about the location? Uh, how important is for this market the location? Definitely, that's one of the main priorities for anyone who is picking a, a location. So Kazai has always looked for premium locations and Noma has been more diversified in terms of locations, but we do have some golden rules when we look to this point. For example, the subway. So to have a transport uh, public that, that it can, can be used and very easily to all the, the, the different nomads that are going to stay with us. The business center, so it must be connected to, in an awkward distance to, to different places where you can work or when you can have a nightlife and restaurants and things like that. So definitely location is a key uh, role on, on our analysis. And before we start and look how our supply will grow, we always take a step back to understand what are nomads and what are clients are looking in terms of location. So definitely that's uh, one of our main priorities and one of our challenges also in terms of growth. Uh, Nico, what are the challenges for this merger and for, for being competitive in this market? The first thing is that the merger presents a lot of opportunities, uh, like we mentioned, uh, being able to bring the best of both approaches to growth. But, but as you mentioned, every merger has challenges. For us, um, 
the most important thing that we're focused on right now is that our teammates don't feel like they work at two companies anymore, but they really work at one company. Uh, Tomas and I um, started our companies, but really the engine of the guest experience, of the growth, of the data, all of that is from our employees. And so we want them to feel included as one company building one joint future um, rather than two. In the short term, it's important for us to make sure that we're uh, continuing uh, both uh, brands for our guests and our, and our landlords, but internally we want to make sure that we're all beating to uh, the same drumbeat. Uh, Thomas, how important will be Mexico in, in your plan? Nico can also tell more about how Mexico has been on, on Kazai structure, but what we've been so far, uh, what, what we have seen so far is that uh, Kazai has done a great work uh, in Mexico in terms of brand value and brand equity uh, for the Mexico citizens and the experience that Kazai could bring to, to the Mexico uh, units are really outstanding. And when we look also to the numbers and to the unit economics, and probably that's why it's, it's closer to US and you have more dollar dollarized uh, values, is very impressive what has been built so far. So even though we have more units in Sao Paulo and Brazil, then in Mexico, definitely Mexico is a key location and a key a position for, for our future brand. And I'm really excited to know more about Mexico, <laughs> actually. So I'm visiting Mexico soon, and I'm very excited of this uh, new market that as a company in Looking Chinoma, we are entering to. And I'm feeling that very optimistic about this, this country, and I'm excited to, to know better how things will work out there. Okay, um, Nico, uh, what can you tell me about your, your expansion plans in, in Latin America? As I mentioned, part of the reason that, that Tomas and I were so excited to partner with each other is that we have the same ambitions, which is to really build an iconic hospitality brand for Latin America, right? We might have started Kasai in Mexico and Tomas might have started uh, Noma in, in Brazil, uh, but really uh, the ambition is to become a regional and who knows, maybe even in the future, a global player. Um, and so for us right now, uh, as we previously mentioned, our focus for the next uh, several months is to really um, integrate the companies. But after that, after we have a very good handle on on both companies' learnings from each other, uh, then then the plan is to go to the rest of the region. And so that looks like Colombia, that looks like Peru, Chile, um, and, and really take um, the model that we really nailed in Mexico and Brazil to the rest of the region. Yeah, I, I read a few days ago in uh, Mexican um, media that you want to be the like an Airbnb Latin. So what, how can, can, can you create your value added and how the consumer uh, can identify your model? As I mentioned, I think that the key differentiation between uh, a company like Kasai or like Noma and a platform like Airbnb or Booking.com is that we really control the experience, right? So for us, it's important, for example, with our real estate partners that um, we enter into long-term arrangements with them uh, versus on other platforms, you can list your spare bedroom for a weekend, right? And so for us, um, because we can control um, the building entry experience, uh, the full apartment uh, experience, we can really make sure that our guests are having that really five-star um, experience that they, that they expect from us. Um, and so for us, the differentiation is that uh, we're really focused on the full package rather than just um, you know, being able to um, have as many um, kind of spare bedrooms on the platform as possible. Okay, uh, Thomas, um, what are the goals for this year or the short term in, in, I don't know if in terms of users or in, term, in terms of locations? Well, first of all, uh, Claudia, now our main priority is on the integration. So instead of looking externally, now we are really looking internally to the team, understand how we can merge both cultures and team. We have a lot of synergy to grow on that. So in the next six months, our main priority is on that. And after that, uh, as Nicole mentioned, we have received over 200,000 guests and our goal is on the next two years, reach over a million guests in Latin America. That's a very a large and ambitious number that we are 
uh, potentially uh, able to, to reach. And we're really excited about that. And looking to locations, as Nico said, uh, we are still all in Brazil and Mexico, but why not uh, expand to different countries and different regions that our clients already want to be there. Uh, and there are key locations, as Nico mentioned, as in Peru, Colombia, that could be definitely great locations to be at. But now the main priority is to look internally in the next six months and starting on 2023, reach those numbers in terms of clients and look to also different countries and to expansion on LATAM as well. Uh, Nico, in addition to the, um, to the money or the investment uh, that comes from this merger, uh, what is the, the real uh, value of the technology in the, in the formula, of, of, in the business formula? Yeah, you know, Claudia, I'm, I'm very happy that you asked that because technology is really the, the core DNA of both Kasai and Nova. In fact, Kasai, I started the company as Kasai because it was Casa Inteligente, right? And so from the very beginning, I wanted technology um, to uh, feature importantly. Um, originally, we thought that technology was going to be really focused on the guest experiences. So that's why we have, um, as Tomas mentioned, fast Wi-Fi and Google Homes and Chromecast and all of the apartments. But very quickly, we realized that an even more important usage of technology and big data was on making our operations more efficient. We could not operate 3,000 apartments uh, without uh, technology. Otherwise, we would have to scale um, all of our costs as we scale um, the number of apartments. So, and so what does that mean? That means that um, our housekeepers, for example, um, after they finish uh, the cleaning, they take a picture uh, of the apartments with their phone, and then we do image analysis on that to make sure that the apartments look like what they're supposed to when they were first uh, put online. Or all of our guards, for example, have access to uh, a guard app where they can use that to control the movements in and out of the building. Or, uh, you know, making sure that we're using um, smart lock technology in all of our apartments in Mexico and Brazil to make sure we don't need someone that goes in to each apartment, right? And so every one of the examples that I just mentioned, housekeeping, guards, smart locks, all of that could be solved with people and it's very tempting to do so. Uh, but for us, we wanna make sure that we can scale as efficiently as possible. Um, and so that's why even from the very, very beginning, uh, our, our key focus was on hiring the, the smartest uh, engineers uh, in the region. Uh, Nico, how do you balance uh, the, the technology or big data and, and uh, hospitality standards. I mean, uh, because finally people arrive to a place, but where, where is the, the human element? As you say, hospitality uh, has uh, been very much through the last like several centuries and millennia always been a human interaction. And there will always be a subsection of our guests uh, that really uh, want to have that human interaction. And, and so for us, that means a couple of things, um, both for safety and also for um, this human element. All of the uh, buildings have a guard that welcomes the guests. Um, and, and, and that way we can make sure to have 24-7 um, human coverage in all of the apartments. Um, but, but then the other thing is that um, we always want to make sure that a human is the fail safe for the technology. And, and what I mean by that is that uh, we always want to make sure that we're always uh, evaluating with a human a random sample of apartments uh, to make sure that the cleaning is supposed to be what it looks like or that the, the Wi-Fi is as fast as it is, right? And so um, for us, we want to make sure that uh, we're scaling through technology but really testing, um, testing the quality through, through humans on, on a small percentage of, of those, uh, those standards. Uh, Thomas, um, how the pandemic times uh, changed your, your business perspective? Oh, that's a great question, Laura. And I think that uh, around those tough times that we learn more and we understand that we need to adapt. That's a word that every time we speak on daily basis on our team. So adapt to the pandemic, adapt to the different crises we are living right now. And when we look to the pandemic, our LOS, this that is the length of stay that we used to have uh, on Noma, was around two to, to three days, so 2.5 days. So it was very focused on short-term rentals and really short-term rentals. And one day, simply, there was no more short-term rentals, right? That there was a different 
way of using uh, the, the real estate. On that time, we understand that we need to have different solutions also to those travelers who want to stay longer on our stay. So we created a different part of our platform that can provide monthly stays in a very easy and frictionless way to the customers. So when we look to the whole uh, uh, rental platform that are available today, we have the very short-term rentals and we have the very long-term rentals, but we don't have nothing in between. So what if you need to spend two or three months in any city, you don't have an easy and plug and play solution to, to stay on. So a pandemic was a, a great learning to understand that we also have to adapt and create different products like that. So uh, now, even today, uh, since we are getting back and bouncing back from pandemic, we still have around 20 to 25% on these longer stays, creating a different solution that we have on the pandemic. So that was an important thing uh, to, uh, to, to uh, update on our business. And also, of course, all the different uh, ways that our team sees how we should adapt and not put all the eggs in the same basket, you know. So we are always trying to be more innovative. So definitely the pandemic uh, brought a lot of learnings to, to, to ourselves during the last two years. Okay, finally, this question is for both of you. Um, how do you define a very competitive business involved in, in hospitality, but with big data? Uh, resume in three words. I would say um, transformational, efficient, uh, and I would also say challenging. I would say adaptability. The other thing I think that me and Nico has in common, that is the ambition. To, and the third point I think is the being pragmatic. Mm -hmm.